I want to introduce you to a method of um, source setting that I've used for 50 years and it's, um, it's very simple. It's very different than using a source set which is, uh, has be become quite normal for people to use source sets. But sometimes when you're setting saws with very small teeth, um, the plunger on a, a traditional saw set is often too wide uh, and it doesn't get you exactly where you want to be. So I use a, a nail punch here. We call it a nail punch in the UK, a, a nail set in the US. And um, this is just a simple uh, 1 16th diameter nail set. Um, this is a little bit different. I like the idea of this one. It has a little dimple in the end that I can put on the corner of a tooth and I can locate it with that. Makes it central to the tooth and when I tap it with the hammer I get the exact set without any slippage and that's one of the nice things about having a dimpled nail punch. So I've got my plate suspended here. The one thing you don't want is for this to be rocking when you're working it. Take a piece of wood that's thick enough to take up half the handle and then slide a wedge underneath the handle and that will make the plate solid enough. You can clamp it if you want to to the bench top or to whatever, find some way. It's kind of hard to do. But what we have to do is we have to determine the teeth that are leaning away from them if this saw has existing set. Now this is a newish saw and it does have set in it so I have to determine which teeth are leaning away from me and those are the teeth I'm going to set. So I place my nail set on the, uh, in this case it's the second tooth, that's the tooth that's leaning away from me. I angle slightly because that compensates for the set of the tooth that's already existing. And I take a, a this is a 12 ounce Stanley hammer, it's a cross pane hammer, cross pane hammer and it's perfect for this. So I place the, the hammer on the nail set and then I just lift up and one tap. I place my hammer on the plate to stop movement. Tap, hammer set. Tap, hammer set. And I work across the saw setting only the alternate teeth. So I skip a tooth with each one of these taps. Oops, and that glanced off the edge but it didn't damage the tooth. So make sure you locate that dimple. All the way along from one end to the other, every alternate tooth. Then we come in from the other side and we do the teeth that we've missed. It's very simple, so we flip the saw over and do the same on the other teeth. This is very quick, very effective. So, now we just want to discuss a little bit about, whoops, again I slipped, but it's not damaging the tooth. Hopefully it's not. Make sure you pick up exactly where you left off. So that was the one. One thing we want to discuss is the size of the teeth. Now, you're going to get saws that have 22, 24 teeth to the inch, up to 32 teeth to the inch. And the reality is they're very difficult to sharpen. I would say they are impossible to sharpen by hand. Most of those have been cut into the, uh, the, the edge of the saw by some mechanized method. We don't really have the uh, ability to set teeth or even to sharpen teeth that are that small. So generally I would recommend you don't generally need a sawtooth pattern that has more than say 16 teeth to the inch. I don't usually use six, more than 16 teeth to the inch. So tenon saw, uh, mid-sized tenon saw, and then a dovetail saw. Dovetail saw I would say 16 teeth to the inch is great. You can resharpen a 16 points per inch saw. And then when you drop down to a, a larger tooth, say a 14 points or a 12 points, those are very easy to set and to sharpen. And that's why I recommend those sizes. I don't want to throw away saw, never going to buy one, except as an example of what to buy, not to buy. So that's what I would do. So I keep working along this side of the plate till I get to the other end and then I flip over and I do exactly the same to the opposite teeth, the teeth that are in between.
once you've got these uh, hammers set, you can, tie, you can try the saw and see how you feel with the saw. Run it into the... A <coughs> run it into a piece of wood and see how it feels. That feels fine. The only thing that I might say is the set might be a little bit too heavy. It looks nice and even, the cuts are nice and clean. One thing you can do is take a second hammer, lock it in the vise here, and then take the saw like this and just tap all the way along the saw. And what this will do, there's enough memory in the steel, steel this will spring back and it will give a very uniform set to the teeth. So not heavy, not heavy hammer marks, make sure it's centered on that anvil, which is the hammer now. Remember safety, your issue, you have to take care of yourself. Flip over, do the same from this side. And what's stopping the hammer is the plate itself, but the memory, the steel of the tooth is springing back because it does have spring in this steel. Look all the way along. Yeah, wear some safety glasses just in case. And that's that. So you're not striking that very hard. Let's see what I have at this end here. <laughs> Dovetails. Oops. Does that work? Works great. So that's taken off the heavier set, made it a little bit more refined than I had with this one, uh, and very uniform, and it's very smooth in the cut. So it's an ideal way for setting small tooth saws. Perfect.